You are listening to Model Mentality. Welcome to Let's Get Clinical by Dr. Ali. In this segment, I explore connecting the dots between our guests' personal stories and the larger mental health context. Please note that the contents of Model Mentality are for informational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your mental health professional or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding your condition. Never disregard professional advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have heard on Model Mentality. You have just been listening to our interview with Melody Monroe's. Let's review Melody's story. Melody Monroe's is a fashion model from Martinique who started modeling at the age of 17 and moved to New York City at age 18 where her career took off. However, it was not without adversity. Melody experienced firsthand the challenge of being a model of color in an industry where she was a minority and describes an encounter with sexual harassment and sexual violence early on in her career. We are honored to have Melody on our podcast and for Melody to have shared her story with us. Three things stand out to me from a clinical perspective. First, racial tensions in the early days of her career. Second, sexual harassment or sexual violence in the workplace. And third, mental health effects of workplace sexual violence. First, what about the racial tensions in her career? Melody describes how early on in her career, there were only a few girls of color on the runway, and her experience was that given the limited places for people who look like her, there was an air of awkward competition in which she was made to feel that she was lucky to be occupying one of those spots, which she mentioned would affect her sense of self-worth. And she observes over time, diversity has broadened in her industry. And I love how she emphasized how the link from consumer to brand has shortened. Consumers are demanding a better representation of the human race among visual imagery in the media, from race to size to gender. And perhaps the continuation of this trend is one structural change of many that can work to address systemic racism and other forms of discrimination. And furthermore, these types of continued changes can work to prevent psychological distress and mental health consequences, such as in Melody's case, impacting her sense of self-worth or predisposing to anxiety, depression, and social exclusion. Second, what about sexual harassment and sexual violence in the workplace? Let's start with some context. According to the World Health Organization, globally, more than one in three women are victims of sexual harassment or gender-based physical or sexual violence. More specifically, according to a study in the United States from the National Intimate Partner and Sexual Violence Survey, a sample size of approximately 40,000 people, 5.6% of women and 2.5% of men reported some type of sexual violence by a workplace-related perpetrator in the U.S. Melody experienced unwelcome sexual advances in the workplace, in a high-stakes workplace environment, on a set when she was 18, just after she began modeling. At that stage in her career and her development, she did not feel confident to speak up, despite her knowing inside that what had happened was wrong. But no one intervened on set. In fact, people turned their eye or tried to laugh it off because that's just how it was. As a result of what she experienced, Melody cried and wanted to run. She called her agent later, who at that time could not offer the support that was necessary. Melody, in her workplace in 2010, did not have the protections in place that should be a part of every single workplace environment and are preventable. Looking back on her story, what would it have looked like in a safe working environment? It would have been respectful for every single person on the set who saw her clothes fall off to run to help her cover herself and for no one to tolerate any comments about her exposed body. Melody's story is one of countless stories. She was able to bury what happened and move forward in her career despite it and leans on friends and family for support. She's resilient in light of this. However, this is not always the case for others. So what are the mental health effects of sexual harassment and sexual violence? A few things are important to note. Sexual harassment and sexual violence have dire consequences for mental health and increases risk for persistent psychological distress, depression, anxiety, and acute and traumatic stress syndrome, such as PTSD. And this is for those directly affected, but also for witnesses and bystanders. The mental health effects also in turn can affect health. And incidentally, for both men and women, Fear was the most commonly reported effects of sexual violence in this survey. Most people, however, are resilient. For Melody, 
Her experience on that set at age 18 was an isolated one, and today she is stronger than ever and more self-assured and knows that if this were to happen again, she will use her voice to stand up to what is ethically and morally wrong. I'll leave you with this quote that I found in an editorial in The Lancet, a journal I like to follow. Quote, sexual harassment in the workplace is a form of gender-based violence at work that is an organizational, criminal, and an ethical issue. End quote. I have utter respect for Melody to take the time to open up with us about her experiences, both as a Black woman in her industry and about sexual harassment and sexual violence in the workplace, because these struggles are universal and global. Many people struggle with racial discrimination and sexual violence, both within and outside of the modeling profession, and we want you to understand that you are not alone, that there is power in speaking up and in asking for and receiving help. Thank you for listening to Model Mentality and our interview with Melody Monroe. If you or a loved one are struggling with an experience of sexual violence and you are located in the United States, please contact the National Sexual Assault Hotline at 1-800-656-4673. That's 1-800-656-4673. If you are located outside of the United States, please contact your local hotline or health service. Thanks for listening to Let's Get Clinical by Dr. Ali. Please check our show notes for references and more information on this episode. As always, if you are in crisis or you think you may have an emergency, call your doctor or 911 immediately. If you're having suicidal thoughts, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. That's one 800 273-8255 to talk to a skilled, trained counselor at a crisis center in your area at any time. If you are located outside of the United States, call your local emergency line immediately. What you have heard on Model Mentality does not represent what would take place during a psychiatric assessment or an actual therapy session. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Model Mentality. If you like today's content, please subscribe to Model Mentality or wherever you get your podcasts. And while you're there, don't forget to rate and review us. Model Mentality is brought to you by Mind Studios.